Hi, this is David Cochran. Today let's work with Twitter Bootstrap's carousel plugin. We're going to take a page that looks like this and we're going to swap out that big hero unit, this big welcome area, for a carousel that looks like this and rotates our images through um, with nice handles for going back and forth and then with these nice areas for um, displaying our captions. So that's what we're going to work on today. I've given you a set of files. We're going to open those up and go to work. If you'll open index.html from your supplied files, you'll open that up in your editor. You'll see that it looks like this. And we're going to start by swapping in uh, the markup that we'll use to structure our carousel. We're going to do this down below the nav bar, just inside the container you'll see the main hero unit for your primary marketing message and all that. And we're going to just delete that section, that whole div with the class hero unit and its content. And we're going to substitute in our carousel markup. Now I've elected to simplify that for you. If you'll find this file, this is the file called carousel markup sample. And if you'll open it in your editor, you'll see I've just gone ahead and worked out for you the basic structure. Let's take a minute to look at this structure. Um, you can see that I've got a parent container that wraps the whole thing. And there's a couple of key elements to this. First of all, we need an ID. We'll use this ID down below for the handles that go to the next and previous slide. So this ID is important. You should name this something that makes sense, perhaps homepage slider or something like that. Then the class carousel um, is important for your CSS styles that get applied to the content as you go down. So that class is important and slide is important because that's what's going to tell it to add that sliding animation that we like. Now inside of that is a child div called carousel enter and it's going to wrap around all of our items. So it goes around. In this case we have four items with images, links, and captions. Um, in this case I don't actually have links supplied, though I do in the demo. Um, and so here are four items all wrapped around uh, by the carousel inner div. Here's an item and the first one's given the class active because it's going to be the first one we see it's going to be active from the outset so be sure and apply that class to your first carousel item. Then inside of that we've got an image and I've made it nice and large so that it can stretch the full width of the site when we go full width using the responsive layout and then a div of class carousel caption containing a paragraph inside. That paragraph tag is important for the font color so it stands out as it should. So the structure provides you all the stuff you need and as we go down to the bottom you're going to see after carousel inner closes down here on line 29, line 30 begins our next and previous controls. We've got a carousel control left and this ID in the href, this needs to match the ID that we've given the parent container up above. So it needs to match what we have right here. So whatever you name that, make sure it's consistent down here for this href value for both the left control and the right control. And then we've got um, the data slide, which is important, and then the symbol indicating left and right. So that's our structure. We're going to actually take this and copy it. So just go ahead and select all of that, copy, we can go to our file and place this where we used to have the div of class hero unit. I'm going to go ahead and highlight this and indent it a bit so the indentation works as it should in its context. And I can save that. So let's save it and see what it gives us as a result. Gonna refresh. And we see that we get our image. This is using a place hold it image so it gives us just a holder image with those dimensions indicated for us which is kind of nice. And what you're going to find here is that if you start messing around with this carousel it'll start doing its rotation every five seconds as it's configured to do by default. 
but if you refresh that again and you don't interact with those next and previous handles, it's actually not going to start up on its own, it's just going to sit there. So we're going to need to um, double check our JavaScript. We know it's working because it's doing the basic things for us, and up above we've got drop downs working, so JavaScript's connected. Um, but we need to go ahead and initialize the JavaScript that makes this carousel run um, right as soon as it loads. So let's do that next. If you'll go to your file and scroll down the page to the bottom, you're going to see that I've provided the recommended method of hooking up jQuery. The HTML5 boilerplate recommends this, so we're getting it from Google's CDN first. And then if for some reason that link gets severed, then we can go ahead and get our local version that's provided in our file. So this version is located in the JS folder, and I'm using version 1.7.2, the minified version. And you'll find that in our files. Let's go ahead and note where it is. Right there, so we're providing a link to it, just in case the link to Google CDN version gets severed. So that's the recommended way of doing it. And then we've linked to the compiled and minified um, set of Bootstrap JavaScript plugins right there, also in that JS folder. There it is. So let's add our lines of jQuery to go ahead and initialize our carousel as soon as the page loads. We're going to do our typical document ready function, which you should be familiar with if you've done some jQuery before. If you haven't, this just makes sure that everything's ready to be worked on before we try to do stuff to it. So this makes sure stuff is ready. And then we nest in between here the thing we want to do. And what we want to do in this case is we're going to select that element of class carousel and we're going to run the carousel action on it that's provided by Bootstrap's carousel plugin. And that's all it takes to kick this thing off from the outset. So let's save that, go back to our page, and refresh. And we should see this thing start running on its own here within five seconds. There it goes. So it's doing its thing without our having to kick it off by interacting with it. Now, the discussion of this out on the documentation is found at Bootstrap Docs. If you go to the JavaScript plugins, you'll find this page, and you can go down to the carousel, and it takes us here. Here's their sample carousel, and you'll see that they've done very much like what we've done right there. And then we see that there are some parameters or some options we can set on this. And down below, they provide an example of that. So an easy thing you might want to do is to modify how frequently or how quickly that uh, image rotation happens. And we can add this structure in the middle to accomplish that. So let's just play with that real quick. Uh, right here in the middle of the carousel, we're going to establish space to enter this parameter. And interval 2000, save. Refresh, and let's see if it kicks off going faster now. There we go, and it does. And you probably want to change that value to something a little bit higher. If you want it to be a little bit slower, that sometimes can give people a little bit more time to process your featured content. Maybe eight seconds instead of five, and you can then slow that down to give people time to read. So now that you've gotten this far, you're free to customize to your heart's content, going up and substituting in your own images. Um, you can choose the dimensions. 1,200 pixels wide is wide enough to fill the full width of a responsive uh, version of your Bootstrap site. Um, of course, that's a large image, and so um, you may want to make adjustments if you're planning on delivering to mobile, but that's a topic for another day. So for now, um, have fun playing with Twitter Bootstrap. Don't forget to consult their documentation, and I've provided a link as well to the Google group where there's some friendly folks who can answer your questions. Um, and of course, we invite you to comment down below, and we've got lots of friendly voices contributing here as well. So thanks, and hope you have fun.